Make your own microscope and stick to real microscopes. Make your own microscope. Last week, my little sister knocked my microscope off the kitchen table. It broke, of course. So I went to the mall to buy a new one. But when I stopped into a store called Science Adventure, I was stunned by what I found. The microscope my sister broke cost $144.99. I'm 11 years old. I don't have that kind of money. No one my age does. Luckily, I found out that I didn't need that much money. I realized I didn't have to buy a new microscope. I discovered that I could instead turn my smartphone into a microscope. So that's just what I did. It turns out that it was a great way to save cash, to learn a lot, and to create an effective tool of scientific exploration. The best thing about making a smartphone microscope is that it costs almost nothing. The only supplies I needed were a laser pointer, a bit of poster tack, a flashlight, some white paper, and a clear plastic. Emerson. Honestly, I had most of all that stuff at home already. I bought the rest of it right there at the mall, and I paid a grand total of $7.99 for everything. That's right, $7.99. Now, my weekly allowance is $5. That means it took me less than two weeks worth of allowance money to buy the materials for my project. In comparison, a replacement microscope at Science Adventure would have cost me 29 weeks worth of allowance money. Right off the bat, I'd save myself $137. It was a great start. Another excellent thing about this project was how much it taught me. As I read articles, followed directions, and watched online videos about what to do, I learned quite a bit. For example, I learned that lasers were first created as an outgrowth of a suggestion made by Albert Einstein more than a hundred years ago. I also learned that all laser pointers generate light with laser diodes. That light then passes through small lenses to focus it. I never knew any of that stuff before. Once I got to work, I also learned how easy it was to remove those lenses. And of course, I learned how to attach one of those lenses to a smartphone so it can act like a magnifying glass. Finally, this whole process left me with a terrific tool. In some ways, my new smartphone microscope is just as good as my old microscope. In other ways, it's even better. For example, just like with my old microscope, I can enlarge whatever I'm observing to an image of up to 175 times its actual size. That is more than powerful enough to view a, the crystal structure of salt or the brickwork pattern of skin cells. But there's also the fact that my smartphone microscope is light. It's portable. I can take it with me anywhere. Plus, Using its video function, I can even record whatever I'm looking at. That means I can capture motion and changes over time. Next week, I'm going to look at some pond water and record the movement of the bacteria in it. I couldn't do anything like that with my old heavy microscope. Now, I know what some people might say. They'll argue that not everyone has a smartphone. They'll say that the cost low cost of making a microscope like mine doesn't factor in the price of the phone itself. They might even say that they don't have the skill to build their own smartphone microscope. In response, let me say two things. One, I never said the solution to my problem would work for everyone. I'm only saying that it's a good idea for people who already have smartphones. It's a bit like buying a special app that lets you do even more with your phone. Two, it is easy to build this type of microscope. Believe me, I'm not a mechanical whiz. I can barely pump up the tires on my bike. So if I can do this, anyone can do it. Since I built my smartphone microscope, 
I've been very satisfied. I was able to keep the money I would have spent in my bank account, where it is earning interest every day. I found out lots of interesting facts and information about lasers and how lenses work. And most important, I created a microscope that works great and has allowed me to continue to learn about the world around me. I call that a major success. Stick to real microscopes. All scientists seek information. Naturally, they want that information to be precise. They want it to be accurate, so they use tools to get it. Some tools are simple, beakers, test tubes, and timers. Other tools are complex, microscopes, computers, and electronic scales. The simple tools used by scientists are fairly cheap. The complex tools are not. So I was not shocked when I read a piece about the high cost of microscopes. I was surprised, however, when the author suggested that people should not pay for pricey microscopes. Rather, she said, people should turn their smartphones into microscopes. She argued that doing so was cheap. She insisted that converting phones work as well as or better than real microscopes. Let me just say right now that I wish that she was correct. It would be terrific if she was right. Unfortunately, I do not think she is. In fact, I think she is wrong on both counts. Turning a smartphone into a microscope is not cheap, and it does not create a great scientific tool. In my opinion, people should not do it. The author of the piece I read began by focusing on cost. She said that she stated that a decent microscope costs between $150 and $300. On this point, we agree. She then claimed that the items needed for a smartphone conversion cost about $10. At first glance, this looked like a major point in favor of the smartphone microscope. I admit that I was intrigued. Creating a microscope for just $10 sounded great to me. Then I took a closer look at her numbers. I found, unfortunately, that they are way off. $10 is not the real cost of conversion. Why? Because $10 does not include the cost of one pretty important item. In fact, I would argue that the missing item is the most important one. It is the smartphone itself. The cheapest smartphone costs about $100. Right away, that puts the cost of conversion at $110. But cheap phones come with a serious security risk. Accounts can get hacked. Personal information can be stolen. To avoid such risk, it is necessary to have a decent, smart, decent safe smartphone. Those don't cost $100. They cost between $250 and $400. So an accurate estimate of the cost of creating a smartphone microscope, one that includes the price of the phone itself, is more like $260 to $410. That's a lot more than 10 bucks. Indeed, that's equal to or more than the cost of a good real microscope. So there are no savings to be had there. Here, stating that one can make a smartphone microscope for a few dollars is flat out false. It is like stating that one can get a red sports car for the price of a can of paint. There is also the small matter of paying for the sports car itself. Anyway, I think it is clear that smartphone microscopes are not cheaper than real microscopes. But what about the author's second position? What about her claim that smartphone microscopes are just as good or better than real microscopes? Well, a closer look reveals some problems there as well. The most powerful smartphone microscopes can magnify objects up to 350 times their actual size. That sounds impressive, but it pales in comparison to what a real microscope can do. A mid-level real microscope can magnify objects up to 2,000 times their actual, actual size. Let those numbers sink in. They say that a real microscope is five, 
to six times more powerful than a smartphone microscope. And what does that mean in the lab? Well, imagine looking at a sample of blood. With a real microscope, one would see individual blood cells, their specific shapes, and their distinct movements. A smartphone microscope would give the observer a very different picture. Suddenly, the sample would look like just a hazy collection of tiny red blobs. Remember, scientists seek to gather precise and accurate information. But the information gathered with the smartphone microscope would be less precise and less accurate. It would be less useful. Again, when the two are compared, the smartphone microscope comes up short. The piece I read about all the the piece I read also insisted that smartphone microscopes are better because they can let users take video of what they observe. That is certainly good and useful. Being able to take video is valuable, and I do not intend to argue against that value. Rather, I will just say that one does not need a smartphone microscope to take a video. I found several real microscopes that come with digital cameras and video recorders. They can record videos just as easily as a smartphone microscope, but they can do so at much higher magnific magnif magnification. Several cost around $300. Again, the real microscope is the better scientific tool. Now, I'm reasonable. I accept that there are some good things about the smartphone microscopes. For instance, they are portable. They can be easily brought it out into the field. That is important for sure. But its importance should not be overstated. Just because something is easily transported does not erase its other shortcomings. A spoon is more portable than a large shovel but I would not want to dig a trench with a spoon. Turning a smartphone into a microscope may be easy. It may make it simpler to observe certain things outside the lab. But once all of the costs are included, it is just as expensive as a real microscope. Further, it is only a fraction of the power of a real microscope, and it does not offer any features that a decent real microscope does not. In short, a smartphone microscope is a novelty. It is not a suitable replacement for a real microscope.